on, on Fifth Avenue. So, looks like we're racing. We are racing. It is the first race of the day. It is Japan against Sweden. It is Dean Barker against Nathan Outridge. And the Japanese with port entry for this first race of the day. The pre-start will be as critical as ever. What moves are we expecting in the pre-start, Ken Han? How will they change from what we've seen before because of the, the high wind, the condition change? I think these guys are... I'm not going to call it survival mode, but I think this is a very different mentality on board the boat today. The aggressive tactics that we see in 15 knots of breeze, especially in the pre-start, I doubt very much they're seeing today. You saw both boats, especially Artemis, come in really late. They're kind of going downwind, really just kind of dogging it right now. I think these guys would love even starts off the line and just get the boat going and, and hold on. So here we go again in the Louis Vuitton America's Cup Challenger Playoff Semi-Finals. The opening race of the day, Japan against Sweden. They are locked at one win apiece in this best of nine battle, remember. So five, the magic number. If you can get five wins, you're into the Challenger Playoff Final. And that'll be on the minds of Dean Barker and Nathan Outridge right now. So this race is on for sure. Once we get into the start sequence, once we don't go over that 24 knot wind speed average within three minutes of the start of the race, we are racing. So, so regardless of what the wind does over the exactly. course of the next few minutes in this race, they're on. Artemis was just kind of struggling to get the boat even to tack right there. They better get this thing going because they're late. I think they're going to get going. Look at those speeds rising at... Uh, a rate of knots, quite literally, 35, 36 knots. We may be threatening the 50-knot barrier today, potentially, but it is the Japanese who have sorted out the start point rather better, and they are quickly up onto the foils. The Swedes, tardy. Very tardy, and as we predicted, essentially no match racing in that pre-start whatsoever. These guys are just holding on right now and let's get this thing around the track let's let's force the other guy into making a big mistake because as we can see very clearly it is marginal for these winged flying wing boats 41 42 43 44 okay so we are now right at the threshold of what we've seen so far here in Bermuda. 44.6 knots yesterday from the Swedes, the quickest. I think the Japanese might have just equaled that a moment or two ago. But I think that then the Swedes might have tipped them uh, just behind, just out of our screen. So we'll have to go back to the, to the statistics guys and find out who is quickest around that first mark. But this is just the beginning of the day. Well, the run speed well within the threshold now, currently. And the first jibe from the Japanese as they head towards the leeward gate. Problems are magnified on days like today. You know, you make a little mistake on a lighter air day, and yeah, you might lose a bit of distance, but it doesn't become catastrophic. This is, this is when it could become serious. You know, flipping boats over, breaking boats. These are things that skippers have right at the top of their minds today. Not to mention people, the people on board the boat. Yep, they would be quite important at this point. All measures will be taken to keep them entirely safe, but just look at these speeds we are seeing. Already. Let's watch this skidding maneuver around the mark at very high speeds. The amount of load on the foils is immense. Not the cleanest around the gate from the Japanese, but they popped up nice and quick. First gate, the Japanese with uh, a decent lead at this point. The boat's on there, code three. Oh, something just fell off. It's like a piece of, uh, I'm not sure what that is, in the, in the back high side mode. of the boat right there. Yeah, high mode. We just saw it a second. We tried to spotlight it, but something Wait, fell off and is on the back beam. Maybe a piece of fairing or something on the back beam of Artemis. Let's get another look at it. 
it's called the ball's oh, out of there, water. It, there it is. There's there's something sitting on the back beam back there. Flew back overboard. Up it in, Oh, I would have thought that they would oh, be fairing. There's some, no, just to be so there a piece of fairing there. They're holding on to a piece of fairing and just kind of threw it off. How crucial is that? Ah. In, in the big picture, probably not to, if it is fairing, as we're speculating. You won't really know until the end of the race. If it's a piece of fairing, yes, it's, you know, it's aerodynamics, but at the same time, a little piece of fairing today is not the reason why you're going to win or lose a uh, sailboat race. All the systems under intense scrutiny in these conditions out on the Great Sound of Bermuda this afternoon. Real test for the technology of these boats, the structure of these boats, their resilience. Here's another look at uh, the incident on board Artemis Racing, the Swedish boat. Looks like possibly just a piece of fairing. I don't see anything super obvious as to where it would have come from. In time, Dean, De Dean Barker is um, maneuvering. I was about to say rather smoothly, but that isn't smooth. And look at the gap closing almost immediately. Get ready, Port tack for Dean Barker. Watch the boundary. Emirates. Sorry, Artemis will be tacking because of the boundary coming up, but this is closing up fast. Press. 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 So a few sets of goggles on board Artemis today, becoming a bit of a trend. I think in all the racing we've done, this is the most amount of legs. We're actually going to have eight legs today, seven up and downs. Eight legs plus the little blast to the finish. So this is this is going to be rounding corners and again and again and again. And hopefully they can keep track. They, you, sometimes you lose count out there. All right. There's uh, a little like, bit boys. of more debris on the Swedish boat, which. Um, Probably isn't there under normal circumstances, but I'm guessing that everybody is recognizing by now these are not normal circumstances. No, not at all. And that, that was kind of strange, too. Just looked look like a big, clear piece of plastic. Where that would have come from, I have absolutely no idea. So that's acceleration. Third gate and really looking to put the hammer down at this point. This is where we're going to see uh, an awful lot of speed from these boats. I saw 46 plus right there. Delicate for to miss racing. And they are slowing right up. I don't have any idea why that happened. Well, they have lost a huge amount of meters as a result of that. Something uh, possibly with their lure dagger board system creating just too much lift. Like the lure dagger board is is not responding quite properly, that that foil might be It's not all the way down, or, or that, may, that might just be the lifting post as well. It's hard to see with all the water lying across the deck of these boats. Well, they got in a horrible tangle, the Swedes, over that gate, Ken. Let's take a look at how it... Turn it, mate, turn it. Nathan Adridge said in advance of racing today that it was going to be less about tactics and conventional match racing, much more about who can handle their boat the best. Right now, that's Dean Barker. Well, where all that debris came from before that was on the back beam came from that area, so it's, that it might be connected. He's just waiting for something. He's waiting for the boat to slow down there for a second. Their problems didn't finish there. Oh, hello. That does not look good. So that's the forward side, on the left side forward. That is about where we just...
surmise there could be a dagger board problem, but we, we're, we, of course, don't really know. We don't have that those capabilities. What we see is what you see, folks, and uh, we can guess as good as the rest of them. together a little run because they've been wildly inconsistent during the course of our time here in Bermuda. They've been throwing away leads left, right and center. A lot of laps to go though, a lot of legs to go. So Artemis is out, but as we saw, a big mistake is a heartbeat away. And this is, this is unusual for it them. Isn't. Yeah, but These guys warned us at the beginning of the day that this is going to be marginal, and guess what? <laughs> so almost 500 meters separating the pair. Swedes winning yesterday by 29 seconds. The Japanese returning the favor by 23 seconds. So we know that they are very well matched. Now they seem to be flying on that foil just fine right now. See the amount of twist in that wing. Actually above center line, above center line down low. And just simply not doing anything up top. Almost reverse twist up top sometimes. So radical angle differences. They seem sorted right there though, don't they? so far, setting the pace, dictating the terms of the race, just the way Dean Barco would want it. We want it in left hand mark, then want it in straight down through the gate to the finish, okay? No, no, we've got another left. Japanese had excellent speed upwind yesterday, and they seem to be repeating that trick so far this afternoon. All right. What about this wind shift indicator? Can he top left of everybody's screen? <laughs> so the wind shift indicator is wonderful for us to see today, and quite frankly, <laughs> the sailors on this boat absolutely could care less. They're going from boundary to boundary just trying to get around the racetrack. Here comes this moment when they bear away and we see potentially the top speeds. We saw, I think, 46, 47 last time around. Oh. So there go the Japanese, and now those boat speeds will gather. Well beyond the 40 knot. Right on the edge, these sailors at the moment being tested to the full. This will be a telling moment as to, we see Artemis going quite slow there right now. Again, on when they're on starboard tack, that was where we thought, uh, he's, he's, you, see, you see Nathan Outeridge. Oh dear, my word, I mean, all kinds of bother. You saw Nathan Outeridge back there with his left hand trying to use the grip on his wheel and it obviously wasn't doing anything. There, everybody. I mean, just give it a little bit more charge. Just keep trying to get around here. Well, he's going to try to continue, and he's asking for more from his grinders. And you can see Ian Percy there battling yeah, away. Back now. I thought for a minute that was going to be another retirement. He was desperately trying to get those handles to work back there in the back of the boat. Those handles, is, those grip handles on the wheel are where he controls the fore and aft rake of the dagger boards 
and he was sitting there, looked like he was on a motorcycle, and he had no juice. You know, he was just trying to find something with his with his grip. There he is again. He's gripping and gripping. Right back there. Whoops. It was there. Ten seconds. Well, they've, uh, they've picked up some good speed subsequently, but they are miles off the pace at this point, and I suppose the delicate balance is for them now, Ken. At what point do they call time on it? Is it worth them trying to get around the racetrack, or should they just call it quits, bail out, and prepare for the next one? If they think something is catastrophically broken, they will not continue. So clearly they, they don't think it's broken at this stage. There's more fairing coming off the Japanese boat. So These boats are breaking up left, right, and center at the moment. Very big boat builder, eh? The, uh, I think these are just cute little pieces of fairing, though, for aerodynamics. It clearly weren't built for the for the uh, water pressure that's blasting into the beams. Well, we told you it would be white knuckle ride this afternoon. That is exactly what it is out there. So many turns around the track. Eight legs. Man, oh man, I, this is breathtaking up here. I mean, I, I, sometimes we don't know where to start because all this stuff is happening so fast. And, and you just end up just kind of surmising what is going on. So this was the Japanese rounding the gate a moment or two ago, and I think this is where they picked up some of their damage on board. Yep, in the, uh, I think in the lower right-hand corner, we're gonna see yeah, that water pressure just popped that fairing up right there, popped it up in the air. And, you know, the dangerous part of that is that that stuff is sharp. That is carbon fiber sharp edges. So, wow, get it off the boat. Because that's that's that not hit, helping aerodynamic no, but situation The either. dangerous spot is when all of a sudden there's going to be people on the other side of the boat. If that thing comes flying off, that could hurt somebody. So that somehow you got to get rid of that piece of fairing in the chase boat behind them behind them will pick it up. We can go. Setting up. Yeah, let's go, Dino. Setting up. Clear, mate. It is an exhilarating sight, but I tell you what, there's going to be a few sailors out there right now who will be itching to get across the finish line right. by hook or by crook with their boat Sorry, even go, 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 go. marginally intact. Stay coming flying, There's a piece right just that's, that's not part of our TV set. That is fairing, just actively coming off the boat. It's kind of hooked on the on the post, that lifting post right there. It's hooked on it, and it's, uh, and it's not allowing it to come completely off the boat. So the sailors coping with so many different problems out there at the moment. Japanese handling it rather better than the Swedes currently. There will be plenty of the teams on the shore. I imagine the boat builders and the rest of the support staff watching probably with their hands covering their eyes. <laughs> exactly. Calling home, honey, I'm not going to be home tonight. Right, you, when you're behind that carbon fiber, nuzzle yourself down in those cockpits, down in those nooks to make sure that flying debris isn't coming at you because those are sharp edges. Still another leg to go. And D Barker closing in on. Another victory which would put him 2-1 up in this best of nine series in the Challenger Playoff semi-finals against the Swedes. They've kept their powder dry. SoftBank Team Japan, they were distinctly ordinary in the qualifying section of this America's Cup. Just three wins, two of those against the French, one against Great Britain. But now really beginning to put it all together and applying the pressure all the time on Artemis Racing and Nathan Outridge. The good news is for Swedish fans, they're kind of dogging it around the race course, but they're on the race course. I do 
firmly believe that if they had a major issue, they'd have bailed out by now and they'd be trying to fix it. Okay, guys, just have a think about it here. No, you just heard yeah. him say, let's have a think about Happy this. To. Maybe we sort the boat out. I think they're gonna I think they're gonna retire from the race. You see all kinds of fairing gone from the front of the boat right up here. There's all that fairing is gone at that stage. And it's on the low load, it's okay. The driving onto it's not yeah, really, I really think good. It's pretty clear. So I think, like, they have to you know, with now. them uh, pouring in the make it, I think the best thing is to have a good look at it. Keep it in smack a bit. Yeah, keep, keep the boat in one piece for another day. Yeah, we'll just go through the top here and hold right there. So the Swedes recognizing that their challenge is done in this particular contest and of course they don't have terribly long to go before they are back in action after the British have taken on the Kiwis and there go the Japanese just scooting across the top of the water 40 knot finish it's been a very impressive race from Softback Team Japan Dean Barker will be thrilled they're not through the yet they've navigated it jeez Hold slowing on. up across the finish line and there will be much relief from the Japanese outfit. Victory for Dean Barker.